You're listening to Coffee Break Flight Instruction by M0A.com. Flight train tips in 15 minutes or less. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com alongside good friend, esteemed colleague, and certified flight instructor, I'm sorry, CF double I extraordinaire, uh, Mr. Larry Diamond. And Larry, you're going to need that double I looking at the window behind you uh, with all that snow coming down. So um, good luck with that one and cheers from sunny Florida. Well, not sunny, but 70 degrees. So makes life a, a little bit nicer in the winter time. Uh, anyways, guys, you're listening to Coffee Break Flight Instruction, flight train tips in 15 minutes or less. I'm going to start that timer to keep us honest. Today's topic is our weather planning process from like, let's start seven days out to an hour before my flight. And I'll just kind of run through you run you through mine. Larry probably has a similar process with a few little variants here and there. Um, but my weather planning process seven days out actually starts on like uh, that weather underground or wonderground um, is the website where I usually like to go. Um, really good information. I love to see, you know, my 10 day forecast, my weekend forecast. You might say, Jason, that's not an aviation website. What are we doing spending time on that website? You know, all I want to know is a forecast. All I want to know, if I'm a week out from my flight, is I want to know, hey, should I scrap this flight and think about renting a car or driving, or what should I be doing? Just kind of get in my mind thinking about it. I may look, and it, seven days from now, it's predicting just sunny, not a cloud in the sky. We all know in seven days how quickly that can change, and vice versa, too. They may be predicting rain, and they predicted wrong, and it's actually going to happen the next day, or maybe a day early, et cetera. So uh, I'm not, I mean, seven days out, I'm doing that same process through and through. Day six, day five, I'm really kind of following that process, watching my forecast. And once we start to get a little bit closer, once we get to like, you know, day four, somewhere around there, that's when I start really digging into the aviation specific stuff. And I love to look at the prog charts, the prognostic charts, because that is giving me a real big picture. For example, I can see that, hey, there's a cold front that's slowly making its way towards Florida. And what happens when a cold front comes to Florida? Well, we have all this nice, warm, moist air. That cold air wedges itself underneath it, sends all that warm, moist air aloft. We have all three ingredients we need for a thunderstorm. And guess what? We get thunderstorms all along that line, and we're not going flying. Now, if I'm on the tail end of that cold front, if it's, if it's passed through and I'm the, the day after it's passed, there could be some beautiful weather. I know it's going to be windy. I know it's going to be a bit chilly. But... I know that. I know characteristics of those different fronts, high pressure, low pressure systems. I can watch how all those are moving. And I'm kind of starting to build a picture. Where the real magic happens for me um, is really 36 to certainly 24 hours out from that flight. At that point, I can finally start getting some tasks. At that point, I can call the flight service station and start getting some briefings. I love to call the flight service station. Everybody says, Jason, but you're so into this iPad flying and all this stuff. I mean, can't you get the same information? And yes, sometimes I can get better information than those the guys in the flight service stations have. But there's just something about talking to another human and getting their opinion on VFR not recommended or whatever that may be. I like talking to somebody. I like sharing my ideas, hearing their ideas, hearing their thoughts. Um, and see what they think about that flight I'm about to take. These guys are trained professionals in that department. Now, I'm still going to look on my iPad. I'm still going to grab all that information as well. But I like talking to a real individual in those cases. Um, so that's what I'm kind of doing. When we get to that 24-hour mark, I'm watching my tabs. I begin tracking METARs as well. This is going to sound really crazy. But I love to watch what the altimeter is doing on that METAR. Example. 24 hours out, the altimeter is 29.902. Next hour, it's 29.900. You know, then it's 29.89. And as I get closer and closer to my flight, that pressure keeps dropping and dropping. What does low pressure mean? Low pressure typically means poor weather. I can do the same thing by tracking my temperature dew point spread. Now, understand as the sun comes up, the sun goes down, that's going to change. But watching that and kind of seeing how that is, am I going to wake up and it's going to be foggy? I'm not even going. You know, this is kind of also where I'm making that decision. Again, I'm a big fan of in aviation, you never have to be anywhere. But let's just say there's a business meeting, you know, 100 miles north. You'd like, you got to be there, but you'd like to fly to it if you have the option. Well, 
24 hours out is where I'm making the decision. Either I'm flying or I'm driving. And I, and I have those driving arrangements you know, planned ahead because flying 100 miles or driving 100 miles is a big time difference. So I need to make that go or no-go decision early enough that if I have to be somewhere on a deadline, I can drive and do it rather than you know, leave later and fly and do it if, if the weather's bad. So that's what I'm really, really tracking. When we're coming up a few hours before the flight, to an hour before the flight, I want the latest METARs, the latest TAFs. I'm grabbing not only the METARs, the TAFs of the airport I'm going to, but airports along that route as well to see what they're up to. Have you ever looked? Uh, you know, if you're going on a long flight, it can be beautiful where you're at, beautiful where you're going, but in between stinks. And if you just look at where you're at and where you're going, you're going to miss the, the big picture in between. That's why things like area forecasts are so valuable. That's why things like your winds aloft can give you, you know, so much. If people think winds aloft, I'm just looking for the great tailwinds, you know. <laughs> but maybe if you're flying up in like Larry's neck of the woods, you know, now we're talking freezing levels. You know, it, it's more than just... Um, looking at what's going to give me the best fuel economy in that case. So I'm really looking to take in that big picture and digest everything and work to make that smart go and no-go decision. So my flight planning process, my go or no-go decision weather planning process starts about seven days out if I know I have a flight on a non-aviation weather site. I just want forecasts. And then it gets more and more specific the closer and closer I get to that flight and I always have a drive plan if I have to to be somewhere. And again, in an airplane, you never have to be anywhere. You can always have a driving plan. So Larry, any thoughts on that? Any suggestions? Anything you want to add to that? Um, the other thing that I also do with, you know, 48 hours is actually my big thing because I'm a big aviation uh, weather.gov kind of person. And actually the prog charts will go out to 48 hours. But not just you know, looking at the weather. Yeah, I, I got icing all the time. I mean, I've got icing anywhere up to like April. And uh, it started actually in November. So uh, you know me, I, I've had some icing time when it wasn't even forecasted. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing. It says sometimes you can't always believe what's forecasted. And so sometimes you kind of have to you know, give, I can do odds. I said, do I have a 50 50% chance it's going to happen? If it's anything over 50%, then that's going to be a no go and I can always go some other time. Um, the other thing is, is also the, my prognosis. And the prog chart is going to help me pick out which airport I want to go to, but depending on the winds. I mean, the last thing that I need, especially if I'm going with a student, is a 90 degree crosswind coming at 30 degrees. I mean, of course, at uh, 30 knots. I mean, I can handle it. I've done it all the time because we live in Michigan. We never get it right down the runway. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to send out a student, especially like on a solo cross country even if it's in a short period of time where he's going to get a lot of crosswinds and maybe get a little extra traffic. And the other thing is that I don't want him even going or her uh, unless they've done the same due diligence on weather. I mean, first I have them tell me what they saw, and then we kind of then I'll say what I got, and then we'll kind of come up to a consensus. So they're not going out anywhere without at least watching the weather uh, at least seven days out, and then especially 48 hours before. I mean, I've actually canceled flights with students when they came to the airport, and they said, hey, look, did you look at the weather? No. Nah. I said, you know, they always got me to back them up. And I said, well, yeah. what if I'm not flying with you? So yeah. I said, okay, this is when we start doing groundwork because this is what I do, and I got lots of hours. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing this right now, you're not forming very good habits. And uh, I'm kind of like not trusting you right now with weather and making a good pilot decision. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, and that it all comes down to making smart go and no go decisions. We just did that, the underground aviation seminar, the, the second one in that series was my five step decision making process. You can find that on YouTube uh, if you guys haven't seen that. Very, very good webinar, a lot, a lot of fun on that. So uh, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that, kind of getting into our brains a little bit about how we make those go and no go decisions and, and what we're looking at weather wise, even as far as seven days out when we know we have a flight coming up uh, the following week. So uh, guys, on behalf of myself, the uh, wonderful CFII extraordinaire, uh, Uncle Larry, and the entire M08.com team, thank you so much for listening to Coffee Break Flight Instruction. Go ahead and subscribe in iTunes so you get instant alerts when the next episode comes out. I'll leave us a review with your thoughts. And uh, most importantly, guys, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.